Yet another reminder that this is 2020. Former baseball slugger Dick Allen taken from us the day after he should have been elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Of course, that didn't happen. The planned election didn't happen because the Hall's Golden Days Committee decided to postpone its scheduled vote for a full year due to the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, Zoom? Nope. Shame on you, Baseball Hall. I was a young kid in the 1960s. Thankfully, I have no real memory of that epic Philadelphia Phillies collapse in September of 1964, the year the power-hitting Richie Allen won National League Rookie of the Year honors. I started watching Phillies baseball in earnest in 1966, and I very quickly became a fan of that young slugger from Wampum, Pennsylvania, who used a 40-ounce bat and would often hit mammoth home runs completely out of Connie Mack Stadium. His at-bats were must-see TV long before network television started using that phrase. Allen has 18 home runs, 44 RBIs. There she goes! Oh, what a drive! Right over the soft drink sign on the roof. He is too much. I didn't know that many fans didn't like him because of his skin color or because he had gotten into a fight with a popular white player two years earlier. I didn't know anything about the racism that he endured as a minor leaguer in Little Rock, Arkansas in 1963. I just knew that I liked watching him play baseball. Yeah, there were some controversies involving Allen during his first stint with the Phils. Occasional tardiness, missed curfews, drinking, doodling cryptic messages in the infield dirt, and eventually demanding and getting a trade out of Philadelphia. But it rarely took away from his hitting prowess. After leaving Philly and after single seasons in St. Louis and Los Angeles, Dick ended up in Chicago with the White Sox under manager Chuck Tanner. And in 1972, he earned AL MVP honors. Over his first 11 seasons, 1964 to 74, Allen's plus 68 and a half war or wins against replacement was better than that of Hall of Famers Hank Aaron, Frank Robinson, and Carl Yastrzemski and others. The seven-time All-Star ended up back with the Phillies in 1975, spending two seasons with the team that was becoming a perennial contender, thanks to players like Mike Schmidt, Greg Lazinski, Gary Maddox, Larry Boa, and, oh yeah, Steve Carlton. It's great that the Phillies in September broke with tradition and officially retired Dick Allen's number 15. It's just a shame that when he enters baseball's Hall of Fame, and I'm confident he will, it'll be done so posthumously. Sincere condolences to the Allen family, including his widow, Willa, and of course to our buddy Mark Carfagno, who has for several years now headed the Dick Allen Belongs in the Hall of Fame campaign. Rest in peace, Slugger. Very good. Very good. Well, Chad, I'm going to, I'm going to tag on to that for just a second because, uh, you know, uh, over the years I have developed a little bit of a memorabilia collection, uh, as, as you're aware, and you can see some of it behind me, uh, the Phillies wall. But it all started in 1985, Jack, with this autographed picture. Huh. This is the first of the collection, uh, 1964 uh, Phillies and uh, Dick Allen was at a show at a hotel in Prospect Park, Pennsylvania, right by the airport. And I went and got my first autograph. It was four dollars, which led to the entire 1964 Phillies set is signed. Wow! So that I got three autographs that day. That was one. This little gem was another. I can't read it. Who's that? That would be Rich I, Allen. Rich Allen also. Okay. And then I followed that up with another ball that signed by Rich Allen, but then I did it the hard way and have the 64 Phillies on that ball. Wow. But it all started in 1985 at Prospect Park, Pennsylvania. Richie Allen was the first autograph, Dick Allen was the first autograph in the collection that is now 35 years old and uh, pretty much covers everywhere <laughs> I can see. You have a good wife, Bill Furman. Oh, uh, well, she, she, well, that I do. Yes, absolutely I do. No doubt.